Schools so far are still tragically isolated and provincial, and we need to catch up. For an archaeologist, there's nothing more exciting than, than digging. You're, you're looking for possible answers, and the excitement and the interest is in, in finding those possible answers and sharing those answers and those experiences with fellow workers. Our belief is that you have to trust students with the artifacts of the past and give them the task of attempting to make sense of it. So that the archetype program, for instance, is really based in the notion that if you give children access to the artifacts of ancient Greece or the artifacts of ancient Mesopotamia or ancient Egypt, that they will, in fact, be able to reconstruct a historical narrative of their own. Well, what we're doing is simulation, and we're mapping our artifacts and the wall we found on this grid so that if, if we find something that relates to another artifact, we can go back, look at the map, say, hey, this bell looks like another one we found. In learning about the past or learning about any phenomenon, one doesn't look at a single attribute or single artifact. One has to amass a number of objects and make inferences of those and construct a database. Well, we have to um, dig up every single place. And that takes a long time, considering that we find a lot of artifacts. We're trying to figure out what happened here, what this whole place is. And we're trying to date it, but we think it's in the late 8th century because we found a Neo-Hittite helmet that came from the late 8th century, and it was made of bronze. I can decide what culture I want to use, uh, what aspects of the culture I want represented in the archaeological record, and then the students can go from there. And even though the students realize it is a simulation, it has been constructed as an educational tool, it becomes real to them. There might have been kind of a headquarters for the, um, the commanders and chiefs, which was right here. And our site, if you look at it, there's a thing that Kim thinks is an altar. And there was like a guard tower over here. A lot of times in Greek mythology, gods are symbolized as animals. and. This over here was where they kept their prisoners. If I had lectured well, three weeks or six weeks on a series, the students would have never remembered more than a fraction of what I had told them. The fear is always that we're going to lose the kids to this tunnel vision, this locked-in vision into, the, into the, another TV tube. And we find that when we're most successful in deploying the technology in a classroom, the kids are actually away from the computer more than they're at the computer. If you go in there on a typical day, there's probably half or a third of the class in there. The rest of the kids have fanned out throughout the school to go find things that are necessary for their investigation. Kids in our archetype class are able to use the Louvre Museum as essentially an extension of their own library. And uh, that's creating an environment where kids are increasingly going to be able to make the kinds of discoveries that up until now have only been, uh, have, have been reserved for scholars to make. We're not here to provide the students with an opportunity to enhance their memory skills. We're here to teach the students what it is to learn. And when you see the students becoming so excited, and we see so, so involved in the learning and, and so passionate about what they're doing, then as a teacher, I, fulfilled, I feel that I fulfilled my duty. This is what I want to do as a teacher. Motivate the student to become a self-learner. If you're doing it yourself, you also learn how to find it, and it will help you later on. It's, it's a very simple matter. Uh, richer schools provide better access to richer deposits of information. And what the new technology allows is a kind of information equity. Chula Vista can have access in their computers to exactly the same resources that the Dalton School students can have access to. The technology is presenting us with options for really realizing McLuhan's vision of a global village. Why not extend our classrooms to California um, by making use of the new technologies? And so this was sort of the acid test. Could we do it? And so if we could do it, then we could say we've really made a, a significant contribution to education. I have a student who, at the beginning of the school year, wasn't a very good reader at all. And she is now reading 
vocabulary, Greek vocabulary, as well as anybody else in the class. Cynthia is motivated because it's visual, it's cooperative. I think that it's because she is feeling successful in a group. When they dig something up, you want to find out what it is so badly. So I get real curious and I start digging through the book, seeing what it is. And I, I imagine myself right there digging it up or being out there in Greece. It's just like you're a real archaeologist and you're in your lab um, trying to find as much information about the, um, the artifact as you can. Fundamentally, in the way in which the students approach the artifacts, the way they observe the artifacts, they draw conclusions about the artifacts, is identical to the process in Dalton. I could be at Dalton. There's some minor differences in their vocabulary and their writing is not as sophisticated. And, but in terms of their ability to make use of the book materials, their ability to make use of the online libraries, I found no difference. And that was a surprise. <laughs> We always have to remember that children come into schools curious. I don't care what their socioeconomic background is. They come in curious. They want to know about things. Why is it that four years later that curiosity doesn't seem to be there? I would say that the variable is not in the nature of the child. The variable is in the nature of the institution. We see the new technology as building on that curiosity and liberating it for exploration. The textbook is 400 years old. It has a, a, a tremendous force behind it, and people think in its terms. And much that has been already created for the computer in some way has been created in its image. We're trying to explore what the new forms are that are possible within the new technologies. If you're going to do that, you can't be religious about the textbook, and you can't be religious about any of the educational traditions that have effectively been with us for 400 years. I've spent 25 years of my life looking for a lever large enough to move the boulder of the traditional school so that it would serve young people more effectively. And frankly, I don't think it's possible for us to go back. The genie's been let out of the box. 